Okay. Welcome to uh, the seventh lecture for logic design. Um, we're going to uh, start on uh, unit three today. And um, then uh, later in the week, maybe, maybe tomorrow uh, afternoon. So maybe tomorrow afternoon at, um, let's see. Maybe tomorrow afternoon at 12 p.m. I will do a, a Zoom session uh, just uh, for logic design, and uh, I will look at some of the homework problems coming up, and I'll also answer any questions. And I'll send out an email link to everybody. So, um, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. And it's going to be for 9, 9, 20. Okay. Okay, writing myself a note for that. All right, now I'm gonna shrink this down, and we will um, we will go to uh, the syllabus if I can figure it out here. Uh, yeah. All right. There's the syllabus. So we're week three. Uh, we missed Monday because of Labor Day, so now it's the seventh, and we'll just have uh, Friday as well. And uh, so the next homework is homework three. It's due on Friday night at 11.59 p.m. Um, and I will, like I said, uh, I will have a Zoom on Wednesday at noon and I'll help you with that. Um, okay, and let's see. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how to, uh, how to do the truth table and SOP and POS. Uh, we, we were going to try and get the unit four. We'll see probably what I'll do. Uh, I may not get the unit four, but we will certainly get the unit four on Friday. Okay. Um, yeah. And for some reason I said video six, but that's not right. This is video. This is video seven. So I don't know why that's screwed up, but anyway, and this is video eight. I guess I've got to go through and fix all of these. Um, okay. All righty. Um, so with that, let's uh, let's get the slides going. And I'll put my little face up there. All right. And I might even make my little face bigger. We'll see if I can. Okay. We'll see how that goes. All right. Okay. Oh crap. Okay, so I think everything's working, so we'll do this. It's raining now, so there's some chance that the power will go out, and that'll screw everything up, so I hope it doesn't, but in any event. Um, so we're going to learn about De Morgan's Laws. We're going to see the difference between inversion and dual. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on dual because I think it's kind of uh, fallen out of uh, any extreme amounts of use. You should know about it, but that's about it. Um, we'll introduce the exclusive R and the equivalence gates. And we'll talk about how to do, uh, um, and we'll hopefully get to the truth table uh, where we can do SOP and POS from a truth table. Uh, we will uh, work a little more on SOP and POS conversions, uh, but I'll, I'll probably do that after we cover all the material. So I may cover four and then go back and we'll work on some of these examples. And also I'll do some of them tomorrow uh, in our Zoom time uh, on Wednesday at noon. It'll be today for you. Uh, I'm recording this uh, on Tuesday. Okay, so uh, we've covered the basic theorems, uh, but uh, a couple we haven't really talked about are De Morgan's Laws and the Multiplying and Factoring Theorem. Um, we have talked about uh, converting SOP to POS and vice versa. Uh, we have not talked about the Consensus Theorem. We'll present it, but like I said, I usually wait till after the first test to really uh, cover it in, in any depth because on the uh, K-map it's really easy to see consensus terms and it's hard to see them otherwise and uh, you don't really have to have it um, for most of the switching algebra problems and I'll make sure I don't give you anything on the test that requires it. Now it might be that you could use it but you won't you won't need it. And then um, yeah and then exclusive R and equivalents and we'll show how to prove the validity of the equation using a truth table. Alright so inversion. So we've 
you pretty well know about this, but what we don't know about is how to generally invert an entire expression. We've touched on it only briefly. So remember, uh, if you have x, r, y, and you put parentheses around it, and then you put a tick out here, what that means is you're going to invert the whole thing. And when you invert this, you uh, you invert all the variables and you inv and you change the operator. You change ors to ands. You change nans to nors and nors to nans and ands to ors. So in any event, uh, so this is this is x uh, ord with y, and you're going to invert that expression. You get x prime anded with y prime. If you take x y and you invert that, you get x prime ord with y prime. But note. This is one thing that students get mixed up all the time. They think if they see x, y here and x prime, y prime, that those are the inverse of each other. And of course they're not. The inverse of x, y is x prime plus y prime. The sign gets inverted too. And that's what makes this a little funky. So you have to be careful not to fall for this when you're using uh, applying one of the theorems and you, and you want to consider this a prime and this x, or this a and this a prime it doesn't work like that uh, because you have to change the operator too. Okay, so how do we do a whole expression? Well, let's take a prime plus b quantity times c prime. How would you invert this whole thing? Well, you the main you do exactly what we just did. You invert all the variables and you invert all the operators. Now notice this c is anded with this quantity in parentheses. So there's there's actually a time sign implied in between here. So that time sign has to get inverted to a plus, and this plus gets inverted to a time sign. So when you're all said and done, and then you have to invert the variables. So a prime goes to a, b goes to b prime, c goes to c, the plus goes to a times, so you wind up with a prime b quantity plus c time, c prime, uh, yeah, plus c, not, not c prime, plus c. All right, and here it is right here. a prime plus b prime quantity, well, yeah, you, this is the first step. So you do quantity prime. Well, when you bring this, when you invert what's in the parentheses, a goes to a, a prime goes to a, b goes to b prime, and the plus sign goes to times. So you wind up with a b prime plus c. All right, does that make sense? Change the operators and change uh, and, and invert the variables. Now the tricky thing here is that there are different uh, orders of precedence, and you must respect the orders of precedence. Because if you don't, then things will get mixed up. And uh, so let me show you. I'm going to turn on my little thing here and, um, and hopefully get out some paper. And I will show you um, what happens when you, when, if you don't pay attention and you um, get things out of order a little bit. All right. So uh, let me get my paper out. I guess I should have had that all set to go, but I didn't. All right. And okay, so let's see if I can switch the camera and I'll make this bigger. All right, I'm still kind of working at getting everything all kind of copacetic and happy. Uh, but all right, let's see how we're doing. Okay, so so if you so what the example we were doing we were doing uh, a prime plus b quantity times c, and we're going to invert the whole thing, put a tick mark here, and what does that equal? Well, so we when we bring this in, there's a times in here, so we have to invert, so we have to prime the c, so we prime the c, we have to change this to a plus, and we have to invert this, so we get a prime plus b quantity all inverted plus c. Well, it was c prime, so we so it takes away this prime. So that was the answer to that. Now we have to bring the tick into here, and we invert what's in parentheses, and so now we get a b prime plus c. Now, what if we didn't use? What if we didn't do the parentheses? What if we kind of lost the parentheses here? Then, if we just had a prime plus b. Uh, C, then what we'd wind up when we did this, uh, or C prime rather, then we'd wind up with uh, A, B prime plus uh, C pr uh, plus C. Now that's that's correct, but going the other way, 
we run into a problem. And let's see, let me lift this up just a little bit. Going the other way, we run into a problem. So again, we'll start, we'll start with, uh, let's say we start with uh, a prime, uh, sorry, let's, let's say we start with a b prime plus c. And let's say we don't use these parentheses. So we'll write it a b prime plus c, like that. And now let's just do it. Well, if we just change everything, we wind it with a prime plus b c prime, which is not the same as what we started with here. So, so because it's not the same, we have we must put the parentheses around this. So when you sometimes when you go one way because of order of precedence, it, it works out that you don't you know you may not have any errors. But if you go the other way and you ignore the order of precedence, you will have an error. It, it's exactly the same thing as as if you have uh, five uh, x plus two compared to five times five times x plus two. Those are not the same thing. And they will result in totally different answers. If you say x equals, if say x equals three, so that would be 15 plus two or 17. But here you have three plus two is five. Five times five is 25. So, and the reason why is because there's an order of precedence. The parentheses make you evaluate this first. Without the parentheses, you evaluate this first. Just, so keep in mind order of precedence. So use lots of parentheses. When you do, when you use De Morgan's law to, to invert an expression, and as long as you use lots of parentheses, it's really easy, and you won't get into trouble. But as soon as you don't use a lot of parentheses, you will have problems. So, all right, let's switch the camera back. We'll shrink me back down. Hi, baby. Yeah, my little dog is a little scared because of the because it's raining. All right. So that's De Morgan's law, and De Morgan's law is really no big deal. You don't want to get get too wrapped around the axle over it. Okay, and this one step inversion thing is again also no big deal. Uh, all you're doing is you're just uh, making sure you don't mess up the order of precedence. So you have to preserve the proper hierarchy or order of precedence. But again, you invert every variable, you invert all the operators. Don't forget the implied times operators, which means anding. Okay, dual. It's the same as inverse. You change all the ands to ors, all the ors to ands, change all the constants, ones to zeros, zeros to ones, but don't change uh, variables to the inverse. You don't invert the variables. And this is what we did when we get our pair of theorems. It's also, uh, it was a way to switch from positive to negative logic, which was a little more of an issue in the old days when people used these, these, uh, these, uh, these uh, RTL schematics uh, to do these uh, digital designs. But people don't do that anymore. We use hardware description languages now, and we generally don't work in negative logic for some groups and positive for others, and then we have to put them together. That's what the dual could be used for. All right, here's uh, examples of dual. So we're going to have three expressions here. The original expression is a prime, uh, AB prime plus C plus the constant zero times D prime times the quantity one plus E. The inverse then looks like this, a prime plus b quantity times c prime times the quantity 1 plus d plus 0 times e prime. Um, the dual can be formed by changing the variables back to their normal. So you just take all, all the, all, you, where they were flipped, you just unflip them. So instead of making a to a prime, you just leave it as a. Instead of b prime to b, you just leave it as b prime, and so forth. So that's the dual. All right. So, it, just to compare things, if, if the expression f equals the expression g, then we know that if you invert f and you invert g, they should still be equal. And if you take the dual of f and the dual of g, they should still be equal. But now the, the original expression f will not definitely not be equal to the inverse, and the dual will likely not be equal either. That's a little, uh, that's a little more of an issue, but generally the dual will not be equal. Uh, we might be able to construct an example where it would be. I don't know. I have to look at that, but uh, but certainly normally they wouldn't. All right. Uh, so all the all the theorems, the original table, which is not in addition section seven. It's only in addition six and before. Uh, 
most of the theorems have a useful dual list. So there's only one or two that don't. And and um, it's a good exercise to drive. You can derive those duals and make sure you understand the concept of dual. But again, like I said, I won't test you on dual. You won't run into it again in this course or in digital systems design or in micro one or in micro two. Uh, you m Maybe you'll run into it somewhere else. I don't know, but I doubt it. So it, it won't really show up much at, at UTSA. I suppose there might be some some corporation where uh, they're doing something and they're still uh, having to use duals for some reason. I don't know, but it's kind of uh, it kind of went passe when we started doing mostly hardware description languages. Okay, and we stopped doing complicated schematics. All right, so um, all right, so here is the chart of laws and theorems. And again, it's not in the new book. They took it out, but it was in every book till then. And this is just a good summary. So you can print this out and keep this handy. And these are all the things you're allowed to do. It, it, all these things are in the new edition. They're just not in a single table by itself. And the numbers are different too. So I don't know. Anyway, so uh, these are all the things you can do. You can't do anything but these, and you can do any of these to modify an expression, to go from SOP to POS form, or vice versa, or uh, to simplify an expression, or any of a number of other things. Later on, you'll see that we'll, we can also switch things into NAN, NAN, and NOR, NOR using these same theorems. OK, um, <clears throat> so let me briefly mention the consensus theorem. I'm not going to test you on it on the first test, so you don't, you don't need to uh, uh, sweat over this, but I do want you to see it. And here is the consensus theorem. The quantity xy plus x prime z plus yz equals xy plus x prime z. What they're saying is this yz term is a consensus term and it's not required. This will give you all the complete solutions. Uh, you don't need the yz term. Now it's hard to see why that is, uh, but you can do a little proof down here, which I just did. Uh, if you want to look through that, great. I'm not going to go through it. But the bottom line is, this is the consensus theorem. Later on, when you see the K-map, you will instantly be able to recognize consensus theorems, and you will also see why it's obviously true. One more thing. Sometimes, like if there are, there are problems in your text, and maybe some that I've assigned, where you would have to add a consensus term, and then, then in adding the consensus term, it allows you to get rid of several other terms, which then become consensus terms. It's kind of a crazy thing. And again, it, it, it just points out how tricky relying on switching algebra by itself to simplify problems is. Uh, all, many times with a four variable or even a five variable problem or less, you can do a much better job of simplifying it using uh, a K-map than you could ever do using switching algebra. So I think you will see that, uh, especially when we get to K-maps, this will all make sense. OK. All right, so um, here's an example. Here's an expression. A prime C prime D plus A prime B D plus B C D plus A C A B C plus A C D prime. Now, can you just look at this and see that there is a B C D consensus term you could drop? Or, <clears throat> worse yet, can you just look at it and see that there's an A prime BD term and an ABC term that you can drop because they're consensus terms. Now, I can't do that. But if I look at a K-map, these become instantly obvious. And you'll see that. So that's why I'm not going to push it now, because it is hard to see. And and I, I don't know. I it it's <clears throat> I guess if you did switching algebra day in and day out, it's all you ever did, uh, then you could you could see these things. But it's a little tricky. And like I said, you can sometimes use a consensus theorem to add a term, which then allows some other terms to become consensus terms, and you can get rid of them. It sounds a little crazy, doesn't it? Sounds like you're cheating. But no, it's all legal. Uh, and if you were looking at a K-map, you would see why that, that happens to be true. Uh, but it points out the fact that when you use switching algebra to simplify a logic expression, you're never guaranteed, nor you will you know deep in your soul, that you have achieved the minimum solution. Because there might be some other th thing you could do that you didn't think of. And only with a K-map or some computer-based tool will you know that you got to the 
uh, to the optimum solution. Okay, so remember, we have, uh, we already looked at our consensus theorems. I'm sorry, we've already looked at our simplification theorems, and we had three of them, right? We combine terms, xy plus xy prime equals x. We eliminate a terms, x plus xy just equals x. You can drop the xy term. And we could eliminate literals, x plus x prime y, you could drop the x prime. But there is also the consensus term where you can also where you can uh, you can eliminate a, a term, or you can add a, you can add a term. Here's an example of adding a term. If you add you have w x plus x y plus x prime z prime plus w y prime z prime. In this, you can add a w z prime term, and it allows you to eliminate the, the w y prime z prime term, which it takes you a little bit of staring at it to make sense. And I'm not going to go through it, but but sometimes adding a consensus term can be helpful. All right. Um, proving validity of your equation. So uh, I, I usually I often ask this on the first test. I don't know if I will this time or not. But uh, what I will do for sure is uh, I want you to know how to do this, and there will probably be some homework problems on it. Now, uh, what you do is you, you just use a, a truth table with all the variables listed. So let's say you have, let's say you want to, uh, Let's say you wanted to prove, say, uh, well, let's say you want to prove the consensus theorem, for instance. Uh, so, so what you would do, you would, you would, so what are the variables? You have variables x, y, and z. So you would have three variables, and then you, uh, you would show, using the truth table, you would build additional columns. So you would build a column for every one of these terms. You build an x, y column, an x prime z column, a y, z column, and then you would build it. And then you would take the, uh, then you would build a x y plus x prime z plus y z column, and then you would also build an x y plus x prime z column, and you would show that your x y plus x prime z column, for every possible value of x y and z, was exactly equal to your x y plus x prime z plus y z column, and that would prove that this relationship is true. Because if it's true for every possible value of all the variables, it must be true. And in nor normal algebra, you can never do that because each variable has an infinite number of uh, values it can take on. But here we're limited to zeros and ones, and so we have a finite number, which is in fact a small finite number. Uh, so that's why we 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 can use uh, a, we can do this. Okay, you can also use switching algebra to manipulate both sides until they're exactly identical. Or you can manipulate only one side until they're the same. Or you can simplify both sides until they're the same. And all the operations you do have to be reversible. Remember, you, you cannot do division and subtraction. And we also don't have multiplication and addition. We just have anding and oring. You can even just reduce it to the optimum POS or SOP form. And then if you do that for both sides, uh, say both the POS form, they should be equal. All right, um, so let's introduce the multiplying and factoring theorem. I did talk about this the other day. Uh, we, we had not introduced it formally until now. It is in that list. If you go back to this list here, the multiplying and factoring theorem is right before the consensus theorem. And there it is. And here is the consensus theorem down on the bottom, 15 and 15D. And then this is the dual, which we're not going to really pay any attention to. and uh, this is the inverse, which we will definitely use. And then uh, these are our three simplification theorems. And this is our first and second distributive law. And then these are just our associative, commutative, and, and functions with itself and with 0 and 1. So that's all there is. That's all the theorems there are. And the last one, of course, now you have the consensus theorem. OK. So. Um, Okay, so uh, so the multiplying and factoring theorem, what you're looking for here is an x plus something and an x prime plus something. And if you do that, you can rearrange it from this POS form into an SOP form. And that's very powerful. That really, really helps you many times. Um, so in terms of going from SOP to POS or POS to SOP, we normally use First distributive law, second distributive law, multiplying and factoring theorem. 
and you can apply them in either direction, but you should only apply them in the direction that you want to move. So you should write the theorems down and put an arrow over them showing you. So if you're going from uh, POS to SOP, you'd want the arrow going from left to right for, for this uh, multiplying and factoring theorem. If on the other hand, you're going from SOP to POS, you'd want the arrow going the other way. And you don't, what you don't want to do is apply the theorem for a few times one way and then apply it the wrong way the next time. And if you do that, you'll find you just went in a circle and, and you're no closer to your answer than you were at the start. All right, so, um, all right, so here's some summaries and hints. Uh, so write out your two key or three key theorems. Really, you should know the first distributive law. So just write out the second distributive law and the multiplying and factoring theorem. And that those should be the two you, you should be able to write out over and over again. Make sure you know the three simplification theorems and keep the, keep the consensus theorem in the back of your mind. All right, make sure you know which you, way you're going to apply them so that you don't go in a circle. So put that arrow down and only apply them in the direction of the arrow. Uh, Eliminate terms and literals. Do that first if possible. You should always consider that first. If you're factoring, try the first distributive law and then the M and F in the second. If you're multiplying out, which means you're, you're going from uh, POS to SOP, then try the second and then multiply in factoring. Don't use the first distributive law on POS when you start in POS form. Keep in mind other approaches and keep in mind the answer that you're going for. All right. Oh, I didn't mean it make myself go away. All right, so here's some simplifications. Let's do a few of these. Um, let's see what else. Let me let me just look at it real quickly. So, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yes. So the first thing we can do is apply them theorem 10. Let's see. I'm probably going to, let me, uh, let me change this. I'll make this bigger and I'll do some of this on by hand. Okay. All right. Now, so uh, so this first one, this first one, what, these are all simplification things. Okay, we're not going SOP to POS. We're just simplifying. Okay. All right, right here. So the first one was ABC plus ABD plus ABD plus AB. Now notice. Every single one of these, if we let AB be X, and we let C be Y, and D be Z, and there's another Z. So first you have duplicated terms. You can definitely get rid of that. So this is equivalent to XY plus XZ plus X. And obviously, you can eliminate both of these, and you only wind up with X, which we said was AB up here. So the answer is just simplifies to AB. So that one goes completely down to AB, which is really nice. And uh, that, that definitely makes your life simpler. All right. Um, OK, what about, um, what about uh, the next one? So that was XY prime plus XW plus XY plus uh, X, Z. All right, now you're supposed to simplify. Well, so so the first thing you can do is you can take X, Y, and X, Y prime, and you get X, right? And then, now you have X plus X, W plus X, Z. Well, now you have, you're back up to this original theorem, um, which is um, X plus X, Y equals X, so you can get rid of that, and you can get rid of that, and you're just wound up with x. All right. All right. Now, uh, and that's theorem 9 and 10. And then finally, we've got, uh, maybe not finally, but next we have x prime times yz plus uh, uh, x y plus uh, x y y x prime y z plus x y. Okay, that's right. Okay, so so what can you do here? Well, 
the first thing you could do, you could use the first distributive law because this is in SOP form, factor out the y. So now you've got y times x prime z plus x. Now you can use the, uh, the simplification theorem to get rid of a literal. You can get rid of the x prime. Now you have y times z plus x, and now you've gone from SOP form to POS form. Okay? And finally, we have, uh, we have uh, A, B, C, D prime plus A, B, C, D plus A prime, B, C prime, D. So you can combine these two into just A, B, C plus this term, A prime, B, C prime, D. Now, um, you could also factor out, uh, oh, I see, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so now we have, but now we have this. So there's a couple things we can do. So we could factor out a B. So you could type B times uh, AC plus A prime C prime D. Now, uh, What's inside here, you could use M and F. You could do this times that, or this plus that quantity, and you could do this plus that quantity times each other, which would equal, which would equal uh, A, Let's see, um, sorry. Give me one second here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You can see, uh, I don't think we can simplify it more than this, or you could even leave the B in. Um, but, but anyway, so that's, 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 that's done. So it's, it simplifies to this. B times the quantity, uh, did I? Where did I put it? Did I put it up here? Uh, well, for simplification, for simplification, let me just do this again. So here's the original. A, B, C, D prime plus A, B, C, D plus A prime B, C prime D. Combine these two to A, B, C, and you get A, B, C plus A prime B, C prime D. That's, that's simplified. Now, if you want to do anything else, you can convert it into POS and uh, SOP form or sorry, POS form if you want, but uh, we're not going to do that right now. Well, I don't know. Why not? So let's go on. We'll, we'll, we'll convert that. So ABC plus A prime B C prime D. All right, so that's, that's simplified. Now let's convert it. This is in SOP form. Let's convert it to POS. So we can first take out the B, B times AC plus uh, A prime C prime D. Now, uh, One option I found is Lennox on Sentinel Street. So, um, so that's fine. So now we can use uh, the multiplying and factoring theorem. We have an A and an A prime. We also have a C and a C prime, so we can pick either one. But notice, again, don't be, don't be tricked. Don't, don't say, well, let X equal AC. So this is the same as B times X uh, plus X prime D because that is not true, because remember, the inverse, so if x equals ac, x prime equals a prime plus c prime, not a prime c prime. So, so these are not the inverse of each other, so make sure you don't get make that mistake. All right, okay, so, so now we have, now we're going to use, uh, let me write this again, so we have b times the quantity, ac plus a prime C prime D. So we can do, we can take uh, the A times C prime D, and we can take the A uh, to that, and this will give us B times the quantity A plus C prime D times the quantity A prime plus C. And now, are we in, are we in a POS form? No, because we have a C prime D term, so now we have to use the second distributive law and expand this. This is okay. The B is okay. So then we have B times, we'll let that be X, Y, Z. So we have A plus C prime times 
a plus d times a prime plus c. And um, that's it. That's the whole thing. Now we're done. So now we have switched uh, the original a, b, c, d prime plus a, b, c, d plus a prime b, c prime d to this expression here, four terms. Okay? All right. So let's uh, press on. So we have some more. Um, okay, I'm going to switch this back. All right, now, so, and you can see, okay, and then we have some others. So here's, here's multiply out to get a sum of four terms. Okay, so here's the problem. This is, this is out of the book. Um, so the first thing you expect, and, and inspect this and see if there's anything you can drop. Well, we have an A prime B term here. We have an A prime B D term there. So we can drop that whole freaking term. We also have an, uh, here we have an AC, but we don't have another, we don't have an AC. We have an A, B prime D, but not AC. So, so now we're left with, now we're left with, um, well, yeah, let me, let me just work it out. That's probably simpler. So we'll work this one out. And we'll do some more of these on Wednesday, but anyway. Um, okay, expand, well, let me switch cameras. All right, so, so we have, um, we have four terms, we eliminated one, and that left us with, um, that left us with a plus C quantity times A plus C quantity times A plus B prime plus D quantity times uh, A prime plus C prime plus D prime times A prime plus B. All right, so we've got four terms. Two of them are only have two variables, two of them have three. And we, but we can't eliminate anything else. All right, so now what do we do? Well, so let's use the second law, and we'll, um, so, uh, so we can use the second law here, and uh, so easiest way to do that then, we have an A plus C and an A plus B prime D, so we'll let this be Z, we'll let this be Y, we'll let this be X, and let's write down our equation. So we're using, we're using it as X plus Y, Z equals x plus y quantity times x plus z. Now which way are we applying it? We're applying it this direction. So that's our x, that's our a is our x, y is a c, and our z is the quantity b prime plus d. So now we're going to wind up with a plus c times the quantity b prime plus d. Now we still have to multiply all this times these other two terms, but we can do the same thing here. We have an a prime, so we can do, we can do, um, we can do uh, uh, a prime plus uh, b times c prime plus d prime. Now, now here's the cool thing. Now we can use the m and f. We have an a and an a prime, and we'll take this and pair it up with this. And we'll take this and pair it up with this. And that gives us A times A B times C prime plus D prime plus A times C times B prime plus D. Now all we have to do is, is distribute this into here and distribute this into here and we get a B C prime plus A B uh, D prime plus uh, A C well A B prime C plus A C D. So we have one two three four terms in SOP form, and that's going from POS to SOP. Okay, so back to uh, 
here, back to here. Okay, now, um, I don't know how we got this goofy thing down there. It does kind of weird stuff sometimes. Yeah, but anyway. All right, um, so, all right, and then I think we, we already went through this, and there's the answer. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna skip the rest of these. The You can work these out if you want, uh, but it, it, it kind of walks you through them, so these would be good practice. And you can factor this, first distributive law, second distributive law, and so forth. Sometimes you have to apply these laws multiple times to different terms. That's okay. And here's another one. I'll work through some of these in, uh, on the help session on Wednesday. And then here's a program exercise. Okay, I already covered this slide, but here's it again. These are good hints to sort of think about when you're trying to do these problems. I did want to cover the exclusive or and its inverse, the, uh, the, the equivalence gate. Or sometimes it's referred to as the exclusive nor. So it's just an exclusive or with an inverter on it. So here, so you know that the inclusive or, uh, the, this would be zero, one, one, and this would also be one. But in the exclusive or, two ones gives you a zero because it, it wants just one, one. Now, what happens if you have a three input uh, XOR gate? I'll leave that for you to look up on the web. See if you can look on the web and figure out how how the truth table goes for a three input OR. And it, uh, it, three input exclusive OR. Because that, that's that's kind of, it's kind of interesting, okay? Um, all right, and then the NOR, the, uh, sorry, the equivalence gate is just, or the exclusive NOR is just the inverse of what we just looked at. So you just put an inverter in the output of the exclusive OR gate, you get an equivalence gate. or X nor. And there's a truth table. Again, look up and see what the three input, how that works. And I think you'll be surprised. The real question is, all, almost everything on there is pretty obvious with the exception of what do you do, if, say if you have A, B, C inputs, what do you do if A, B, and C are all one? What is the correct output? And you would think it would, should be zero, but it's not, it's one. Just, I'll give you a hint. All right, and here's, question. You can look it up. Here's an exclusive three input exclusive NOR gate. You can look up the data sheet on the 74 LVC1 G386 and it'll it'll tell you what it is. There it is right there. You can paste that into your browser and hit go and it'll you'll see it. And you can look and see what the truth table is for it. And here's the equivalent circuit of a three input. And and I think I think yeah that's the yeah that's a three input exclusive OR. Alright there are the theorems again. So um, I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording and uh, I'll put up the quizzes in a little bit. And um, so we will see you. Uh, I'll see you uh, then uh, in a Zoom session at noon on Wednesday if you want help. And hopefully the TA will send out his email and you all will get updated as to when he is going to do the online uh, recitation Zoom sessions. He talked about doing one on Wednesday night and one on Thursday night or something like that. So we'll see. If if I don't hear that he sent out an email soon, let me know. Uh, and uh, I'll get in touch with him and just encourage him to get that done. Uh, and that should do it.